Jacqueline with the Fable Tree here. So it is getting to that time of year where everything holiday sells really well. So I wanted to just show you how to create a couple of blanks that you can reuse over and over and over again, whether for custom orders or, um, you know, just for different designs that you put into your shop. OK, so we're going to make a gift tag slash stocking tag shape. And we're going to make two kinds of ornament shape, one that is just flat and one with a little frame to it. OK, so uh, let's just get started. We're going to come down here to the rectangle tool. Um, let's go ahead and make it a 2.5 inches by 4 inches rectangle. So we're going to create our stocking tag vertically and then we'll rotate it to actually customize it. All right. So you have your rectangle here. We're going to come remove this fill. So right now it has a white fill. We want the none fill instead. Okay, it's not going to look any different on here, but it is. Once you have that rectangle, come to the re rectangle tool, hold, uh, sorry, click and hold and use the polygon tool. Click and you're going to make a three sided polygon, also known as a triangle. All right, come on up to that selection tool, just select it, come over to the properties panel and just make it 2.5 inches wide as well, just like your uh, rectangle is. Now I have this little chain link enabled, which means that it will maintain width and height proportions when I change either uh, dimension. So make sure that you have that. So go ahead, come just line them all up just like that. It's going to look like a tall house. Uh, click and drag to select both and then Pathfinder Unite to get rid of that cut line. Now, this is not cute, right? <laughs> not yet. So we're going to go ahead and use the minus front tool to make it look more like a gift tag and less like a tall house. Okay. And you're welcome to use the view grid and snap to grid to get this perfect here um, in terms of, uh, you know, how much to chop off. But I'm just going to eyeball it and I will fill this just so I can kind of visualize it better. So you can move this up or down until you like the proportions. I think that looks pretty good. And so once you are happy with that, select both and come to your Pathfinders panel. If you don't have that, click Window Pathfinder and then do minus front. All right, and now you have a pretty decent little uh, stocking tag or gift tag shape. I will tell you that I sold a ton of stocking tags last year. Um, and, you know, I think I did, I don't remember, like $11 each. So something to keep in mind. And then we're going to put the little cutout hole here. So click and hold, choose your ellipse tool. And I'm going to just do, let's see, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. See if that looks nice. We might end up doing just... Oh, yeah, too big. So we're going to change it over here to just point two. And I think that's a lot better. Make sure that you click uh, and drag to select both. Go ahead and use the align panel to horizontally align center it. If you don't have that, just object align horizontal align center. OK, and you can scooch that up just a smidge if you want to. And as soon as you're ready, as soon as you really like um, how everything is arranged, I encourage you to make this one shape instead of two separate shapes. All right, so you can um, select both, go to object and group, or you can select both, switch your fill and stroke and come over and use a minus front and then switch it back. OK, and so what that did was it just it actually deleted this um, this circle from the whole shape. So if you were to switch the fill and stroke, you could see that everything would engrave except that. All right. So I like that. It feels very secure to me. Now, once you're ready. Um, go ahead and just rotate it 90 degrees. If you don't have this panel, go to Object, Transform, Rotate. Okay. And at this point, you can type out uh, a name. And you can also let your customers do that. But I really find that my customers enjoy the deep engrave of, um, of me doing it. And then, of course, you're going to right click, create your outlines, Pathfinder Unite, and you're done. Right. And you could fit lots of these on the same page and just knock them out. All right. Now, I in addition to let's see here, in addition to this size, which is uh, two and a half inches tall, um, almost five inches wide, you'll want to just copy and make smaller ones and larger ones. OK, so let's say for um, let's say for like a gift tag, you might want it just to be three inches. Or even, I could even see it being two and a half inches. Okay. And I recommend you just kind of have these as standard sizes that you offer. And if somebody wants something different, they can request it. But um, that way they have some guidance. And you might even go with a six inches wide 
for a stocking tag or even eight inches, depending on how big their stockings are. OK, so it's a good idea to just save these in a document as gift tag blanks. And that way you don't have to recreate it every single time you want to make a new tag. All right. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and create a new document and I'll show you how to do an ornament blank. So these are both going to be round ornaments and let's go ahead and create the base first. So again, you want your ellipse tool. We're going to start with a three and a half inch by three and a half inch um, circle. And you can do four inches. I think three and a half and four inches are both fine. Uh, any bigger is really more appropriate for those giant mansion trees and any smaller just looks too small. OK, so that's my opinion. Go ahead and remove your fill here. And you've got a circle. Now, you can just make a little circle cut out uh, like we've done in uh, previous ornament tutorials here, but I'm going to show you how to make a slightly nicer one. So use your rectangle tool and just kind of eyeball this. This doesn't have to be a perfect dimension of any sort. Um, just get a nice little rectangle and I'm zooming in. I'm going to click these little dials and just round the edges of that rectangle. OK, um, again, eyeballing it is fine. Click both of these, go ahead and horizontal align center. And as far as placement for this goes, you just want to make sure that the bottom curve is not showing at all. OK, so you want to make sure that it is right. You know, it's a perfectly straight up uh, line from there. OK, so I, th I think that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and um, horizontally align center again, just to be sure. And then. Um, Pathfinder Unite. And in fact, I think it's a little too tall still, so I'm going to scooch it down a little bit more. All right. OK, so that's fine. Now what I want to do is create a, a circle that is 0 0.25 by 0 0.25. OK, so we have that here and then we're going to use a, an offset path to make the outer bit. OK, so um we're gonna use let's say a 0.15 inch let's see if that looks sturdy i think it does i think that, that looks sturdy enough um i often see makers uh who have just a really skinny little line here or sorry a little really skinny little circle here and it, it just isn't secure enough and the last thing that you want to do is make a um an ornament that just snaps off as soon as your um customers try to use it OK, so as soon as you're happy with the proportions here and I could even make this this littler one, I could make this a little smaller. I think a point two would be even sturdier. You see that? OK, so once you're happy with that, go ahead and select the center one. Go to object, arrange, bring to front just to be sure. Uh, select both, switch your fill and stroke just so that it knows what to do and then come to your Pathfinder panel and do a minus front. All right. It's just deleting that circle and then you can come right back to this. Now you're going to go ahead and just align it center, drag it down. Actually, not that far. Sorry. <laughs> um, so go ahead and align it center again. And the idea with this, the placement here, you can have it as high as you like in terms of just looks. You don't want it too high because you want it to be sturdily connected. Um, so, but I'd say anywhere from about here all the way to right here. You don't want it to come up into that center circle. That's all. OK, so wherever you think looks the best is fine and go ahead and just Pathfinder Unite. OK, so now you have an ornament blank that you can use over and over and over again for all sorts of beautiful designs. All right, so we're going to do uh, this one again. So just copy and paste on a Mac that is Command C, Command V on a PC. It's Control C, Control V, or you can use it from the edit panel. And we're going to start out with another 3.5 by 3.5 inch circle just so that we can make um, an appropriate uh, inner bit, <laughs> an appropriate inner frame. So object, path, offset path. And this time we're going to do a negative 0.25. OK, and that gives you a quarter inch wide frame. And let's see here. Uh, you can go ahead and do that swap fill and stroke. And let's see, we want to make sure that this is um, at the top, so object range bring to front and then select Pathfinder minus front. And now you have a frame shape. OK, um, and so it'll look something like that. Now, this is helpful partially just for a stylistic purpose. So maybe you want like a light colored background and in a glitter frame. So that's fine. Uh, or a darker wood colored frame. That's also fine. But you can also 
uh, write some words that go all the way across and then merge it with just the frame part and then just glue it to the back end. OK, so either way, you have all of you, you have both of these uh, ornament blanks that, again, you can use over and over without having to start from zero every single time. OK, so it's really helpful to have these on hand. I used these a million times, not these specific ones, obviously, I just made these, but I used ornament blanks a million times last uh, holiday season, and I hope that these serve you well this holiday season. I would love to see what you make. Uh, show me the blanks that you make or show me the, your actual finished products, um, all styled and beautiful, and I would love to share them on my social media. So you can share those with me on Instagram at the Fable Tree or email me, Jacqueline, at thefabletree.com, and just let me know how you'd like to be credited as well. OK, any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments below and I will see you again next week. Have a good one.